for me as native because, you know, people automatically assume that if I'm this native person that I'm doing this type of music and I'm, you know, I'm, everything is about social justice warrior, like everything, you know, not everything about my music. In fact, most of it's not about, you know, how bad things were for us as natives. I recognize that and maybe in interviews and things like that and in some of my music, but I'm about positivity. I, I'm, I'm about inclusivity, not exclusivity. So my music is about sharing my culture, but including people to, you know, to come and listen and, and hear something a little bit different. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it is hard. It's hard as a native female, um, especially. And I've been trying to kind of rework this past year. I've got a new movie that I'm helping co-produce. Um, I'm having um, some new music that I'm working on. I kind of had to uh, have new management, like things like that. I kind of had to do some house cleaning with my personal life and, and even business life to kind of really rethink about my music and how I want to present my new stuff. And I really appreciate everyone who's stuck by me and, you know, who's been fans. And I'm, I've been a little bit in the dark this past year, not really been out there and performing that much, but I've had to do a lot of soul searching and thinking about how I want to, you know, take on these next chapter of my life with my music and my, you know, getting back into acting. Um, so, you know, I'm even thinking about, you know, there's these shows, America's Got Talent. I've been asked to perform on a, a couple of these shows, and I thought about it, and I'm like, you know, I want to be able to get my music out to the masses. So it doesn't matter that I'm a Grammy-nominated artist. It doesn't matter that I've had all these awards. If I have to go out and audition like everyone else just to get that recognition to see if I can get on the main stage, I'll do that. I'm not – I don't have that kind of pride to where I'm not, you know – I want to get out there and I want my music to be to be heard. So any way I can get out there, I'll take an opportunity. So I'm actually thinking about, you know, the possibility. I mean, I don't know if I can say it, but I have been asked to, to audition for America's Got Talent, and I'm, and I'm going to do it, you know. Why not get out there and, yeah, and, and, and uh, do what i got to do? Yeah, definitely. And Hello? one of the things that uh... – one of the things I was going to ask is that uh, your music definitely blends a lot of the native culture, but you also bring in a lot of the other sounds as well. You bring in uh, pop, you bring in some other sounds as well. So you definitely yeah, like, include other yeah. sounds. Oh, I love pop. I love dance. I love all being soul. That's my favorite. Gospel music. I love over the place because I get bored with one style of music. I have to kind of, you know, I, I love different kinds of music. So, I kind of I love the soulful music, so yeah, that's my that's my thing. Um, so yeah, any way, any way that I can present myself in a positive way to show the native people, you know, I always say this: the native people are not people of the past, we're people that are here, we're people of the future. We're, we're you know we're not historical figures that you can just read in, in the history books, which by the way are not all correct and not all truthful, as you were saying. You know, we're people that are amongst everyone else and we just you know sometimes we get forgotten and that's even worse than being talked negatively about is being forgotten and being the ones that no one talks about so it's just yeah the there's, that there's always the light sh- 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 you know, shining on us as native it's people. interesting you bring mm-hmm. that up because i yes yeah, interesting you bring that up because i was uh, talking to a friend of mine and they had seen an interview with john uh legozamo and he was actually talking about some of the native community, and I think he's particularly talking about the Latin community, but he's talking about how a yeah. lot of that community has almost been erased from the history books or actually almost, if they're mentioned, they're mentioned as the criminal element. They're not highlighted for you're the kidding. positive things that they have right. done, and they've done so many positive right. things. So and I know that that is definitely uh, something that we've seen a lot. And uh, before he passed away, one of my good friends was Baba Chuck Davis, and Baba Chuck Davis was all about trying to encourage people to understand that um, about the African culture and that Africa wasn't all just about um, the Tarzan kind of image, that it was much more than that. And exactly. uh, he did that through his dance celebration because he was a majorly world-renowned dancer until he passed away last year. But uh, his legacy still wow. lives on, and a lot of people still remember him for the work that he did. He started his company actually in New York, and I believe that you're in New York now, but he started that there and then moved it here to North Carolina. And the other thing I was going well, to yeah, uh, I, I, know about 
I'm back in New York. I have new, I have um, ties to New York and in, in North Carolina, so I'm back and forth. But like you said, it's you know with the African community too. The, like you know, people think it's all tribal, right? There's all there's tribes of different races. That's tribal. Natives are tribes. The tribal people of um, South America, the indigenous communities. You know, there's so much that people, like you said, they're forgotten people. That there's so much contributions. Um, to you know, to our society, that people just they automatically just think, well, they're tribal. They don't, you know, they're just simple people. They don't, you know, it's they don't. There's not enough depth. People don't think there's any depth to it besides, you know, loincloth and like some drums and dancing. I mean, there's so much more that the African uh, communities and the Native communities that that we contribute that it just kind of gets brushed aside because there's like you said, the Tarzan. Hollywood image of what tribal is, you know, and more simple, which is far from the truth, you know. Yes, yeah, definitely, very much the case. Um, actually, I got yeah. another caller that just joined us. I want to speak, bring them in as well, but definitely don't go anywhere because okay. we're interested in hearing a lot about what people have to offer. Um, who do I have on the line in addition to Dana? I've got another caller on the line. Oh, this is Alyssa Hinton. I just called in. Hey Alyssa, I appreciate you calling in. Alyssa, definitely appreciate you calling. Hey, no Alyssa problem. is a uh, art. Alyssa is an artist here in the area who definitely is proud of her native heritage as well, and a lot of her artwork includes that um, heritage. So we were talking to Jana about some of the stereotypes that exist in the native community, and I know that part of your artwork deals with trying to counter some of those images and stereotypes across different cultural boundaries. So I knew that you knew Baba Chuck Davis as well. I just mentioned to Jana Baba Chuck, but uh, I just want to hear some of your views about uh, your artwork and how you incorporate some of your uh, Native American imagery into your artwork. Uh-huh. Well, um, recently I've been gearing up. I've been doing uh, various studio renovations, so I haven't um, – actually touched my art for a little while, but uh, the, the first piece that's going to get finished is the studio. It's called The Eagle and the Condor, and The Eagle and the Condor has all kinds of connotations wrapped up in it um, in terms of Native contributions, like even going as far as, you know, just democracy itself. Um, the whole idea of The Eagle and the Condor Mm -hmm. uh, relates to bringing the heart and the mind together. It, uh, it's sort of like the epic is now, uh, starting in the 90s, it's sort of like 500-year gap where natives, uh, you know, were kind of like trying to recover from what happened, but now there's all these native people coming together, and you you have, like, serious representation in the United Nations with people talking about... Um, Natives joining the South and the North, everybody kind of putting their heads together. And it all uh, comes around to some of the, the uh, original things that we had here, like uh, the Iroquois Confederacy is really like the original United Nations. And yep. it, and the, and it, it, the Iroquois Confederacy, because they were once warring nations and they came together under one umbrella, that's the original, uh, you know, the blueprint for the Constitution of how to bring divergent people together under one kind of unification. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's really the original democracy and the original United Nations. Was all, it was all here. It was all here. It was all built upon. And most people just have no clue. But once you realize or once you even hear an inkling of that information, all you have to do is, like, Google it and you can find that information, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that's like so mysterious, you know, which makes it even more, you know, kind of interesting that you, you could just look it up, you know. Yeah, and a lot of times people don't even want to see that. Go ahead, Jana. Oh, no, I just want to say hi, Alyssa. I just want to introduce myself. Hi. <laughs> hey, I, I remember hey, you. I met you down in um, Pembroke a few years ago. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sure. I'm terrible with, I'm sure if I see your face, then I would know, absolutely know who you are. But I would also Google, definitely Google you now because the eagle and the condor, that sounds really cool. But, I mean, this, was, this is what I was talking um, earlier about when I when you just mentioned about the Confederacy and, uh, the, like, the, the original 
you know, our Constitution is based on that, the Red Cross Confederacy. But, I mean, that's what, these are the contributions that people don't know. Like you said, Alyssa, people don't know that the foundation of, like, our country, our democracy is, is, is based on the air call, um, you know, about the nations coming together and, and, and um, you know, the history behind that. People don't know that. That's such a huge, huge contribution, what our country is founded on. And, um, and that just kind of just gets brushed aside sometimes or people just, it's not really something that people know, that kids know. These are the things that need to be in the history books. You know, these are the things that need to be, rewritten and, and um, out there besides having to, you know, tell someone to Google it, right? It should be out there. People should know this. Kids should know this. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah. 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 Unfortunately, though, too, many, too often people get caught up in the TV images. And I know that you're getting ready to go and possibly get back into your acting, Jana, but, you know, too often we're yes. stuck in those stereotypical roles of being like the bad guy or the villain um, and things of that nature, but not even understanding sometimes the context of what the supposed bad guy was about. I mean, I don't know that I would necessarily consider Sitting Bull or Crazy Horse a bad guy, but that's if you listen to the history books, they were painted that way, but uh, they were actually protecting their society and what was going on in their communities. But, you know, if you listen to watch the TV shows or watch even the old westerns and things that are out there now, you wouldn't know that because too often they're painted in these uh, very cartoonish kind of ways. That's right. Yeah. We're considered, again, the savages who, you know, who you have know, less of, you know, that we don't have the same intelligence. You know, in this country, Native Americans were not even considered human beings. We were considered on the level of, like, animals. We, it, was, it was legal to kill a Native in, in, in the 20th century. I mean, this is... It's, it's horrifying, you know. So it's you know when you think of how they portray natives, I mean, it was just you might as well be like a cow or a donkey or anything else because we were on the same level as that. We weren't even considered human beings. So yeah, of course we're these savages. You know, we just want to go. We're violent. And we want to kill. I mean, there was none of the truth behind it. We just wanted to protect, like you said. We wanted to protect. That's what was not. Um, and it's it's still a fight. It's still. It's not revisionist history. It's not what people. It's not united. It's just telling the actual truth, um, in the way that it really is. It's not just making up things. It's what really did happen, and uh, you know, but but not pointing fingers to say this is what really happened. It's just at least acknowledge that. The acknowledgement yeah, is a big thing. Yeah, and it's not even uh, it's not even ancient history because I mean all we have to do is look at what's going on in South Dakota and some of the other parts of the country now where native land is That's being true. threatened on a regular basis and where we've got people that are uh, we don't even like to acknowledge them on this show but that are currently occupying that place in. Uh, D.C. and supposedly running the government, but running it into the ground, the best I can tell. But they're right. definitely not friends of the Native community. But it was good to see that uh, even though we lost a lot of major races in this last election, we did see, I believe it was two Native Americans that were elected to uh, the uh, Congress and two uh, Muslims that, that were elected to the Congress, too. So that was definitely yeah. a good positive direction that we saw yeah. folks recognizing that we need to have that diversity that both of you have been talking about involved in our uh, legislative bodies. So we need to have all the voices represented and not just old white men. Right, and it Absolutely. seems like maybe a situation that's this extreme can actually help bring that about because it creates, like, more, uh, you know, people to snap into action and to, be like, not take anything for granted anymore, and then actually really unusual things can come out of it, come out of such a, a crazy situation. But, I mean, I think that racism has always been about money. It's always been about what it's still about now, of just the justification for, you know, the land. And, um, you know, I mean, if you look at the struggles back in Europe before uh, before colonization over here, you know, they, they didn't have democracy. They had feudal systems. They had, you know, just the wealthy landowners and the serfs and the various people. Most of the people were just, you know, scratching out a living, you know, and they were trying to survive. And in their attempt to, you know, get over that situation, they came over here and then turned, you know, turned everything upside down over here. So you just have, you know, history just not, 
not being, uh, I don't know, historical cover-up. 